welcome back. This is Gaming with Rob. Thanks for joining me on another YouTube video today. I have got something really exciting. Tapped into um, Unity talking about FM25, and I want to bring you just some small clips uh, from that video. Buckle up, get ready, FM fans. This is going to be exciting. And so for those of you who don't know the game mechanic, the game is essentially turn-based. So during your turn, that's when you do your stuff. You can view players, you can buy players, you can change your tactics, you can make changes to your training and all that kind of stuff. You can roam around, do whatever you want to do. The only exception to the turn-based approach is when you actually play your match. That is a real-time experience. It's still part of your turn, but the actual match is, is real-time. Um, to end your turn, you click a button to end it. In, and our game is called Continue. In most other turn-based games, it's usually called End Turn. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of how the game works. Now, there were many reasons for us to think about why and how we change our game engine. One of the, the big goals that we had is, is driving some of this. And I'll touch on some of that here now. Um, we wanted to do more frequent updates more easily than we were able to with the previous technology that we had. And we wanted to be able to do this with data-only changes, uh, without having to rebuild the game itself when we actually send date, uh, updates out to our players who get new, new content. Um, so for us, it's about a lot more than just the UI itself. But because the game is so UI heavy, UI is such an important part of what we do. And we change when we change the game, UI changes a lot too. So there you go. They're talking about cross-platform and UI. Obviously, it's important to make sure it's stable. And I completely get what they're saying. Um, with the updates uh, throughout the year, um, it's important not to make those too heavy. And if they can make it, um, just in terms of updating the players uh, and some of the statistics that I, I mean I totally get that that's that's a good move so this is a demo video of um, how this all ties together so this is a simple panel it's on a person it references a person object um, and we're going to add a label that shows the nationality of this person so we've added the label and we give it a name and then we'll bind that data to uh, a property on the person. In this case, it's called national, uh, nationality text, which is presenting the nationality as a text. And we save it. And we go into the uh, game in the editor. And we'll refresh it. And you'll see it comes up. And we can cycle through uh, the players uh, and see how they all pick up the data. So now we want to add something a little bit more complicated. Um, we're going to add a club section. We find a club section document. We're going to add that into our main document of the panel to the bottom, in the bottom half here. We're going to find that in the uh, tree of, of widgets and stuff that we have. Drag it in. Um, and then we're going to bind that to the club name in this case by adding a binding remapper. Make, it, make sure it's parented correctly. Um, and then we're going to set it up on the right-hand side here. We're going to map it from the club, and we're going to map it to the person's club itself. And that's of the type club. And then we're going to save it. And we're going to refresh and go back into the game in the editor. And we'll see that it's uh, worked once it's refreshed. And again, you can cycle through them and see that. Now we want to add something a little bit interactive. So we're going to add a checkbox that allows us to hide the club details if we want to. So we're adding the checkbox in here. And then we're going to add that, make it um, give it a name, show details. I'm going to make it that a Boolean which is basically obviously true and for, true or false. Uh, and we can give that a default value. And we're going to give it the default value off, but you can change that, obviously. You can make it default on. Um, we're going to insert an SLI visible widget, widgets here afterwards. 
Uh, first of all, we're going to tie up that checkbox to the uh, show details one, and now we're going to add in a visible vi widget which we've created, which will contain the club details. And that is essentially what will end up showing and hiding the club details once we've connected it all up. We're connecting the uh, visible widget to the same variable. by binding to the show details one. And that's basically it. We can save it, we refresh it, and come over to the game in the editor, and you'll see that it's now there as a checkbox, and if you tick it, it'll show it, or if you untick it, it hides it, and again, you can cycle through the players. So finally, we want to add a little bit more data to the club section here. We want to add in the club's main teams manager. So there you have it, some scintillating talk there from Unity about the challenges uh, creating um, for FM25. It was a little bit of a snippet. Hopefully it didn't bore you too much. It was insightful as far as I'm concerned. I just can't wait to get my hands on the game now. This video is a little bit different, but I hope you enjoyed it. This is Game with Rob. Smash that subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.